and welcome to DockerCon 21. My name is Alex Yankowski, and I'm very excited today to talk about deploying and scaling machine learning workloads with Docker on AWS. I'm addressing you today as a Docker captain. I'm also a principal solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. The views and opinions I expressed during this presentation should be treated as my own and not as formal statements from my employer. This presentation is structured in three sections. First, we will talk about the benefits of containerization and how AWS is used to run containerized ML workloads. Then, we'll walk you through a sample project that you can use to containerize your own workloads and run them on AWS. And finally, we will see an example of how this project was applied to solve a real-world, large-scale ML problem, and I will share some benchmarks. Let's think about reasons to containerize your workloads. Containers have revolutionized the way we run software. Docker was founded in 2011, and it was released publicly as an open-source project nearly eight years ago starting with about 2,000 pulls from Docker Hub in 2013. Two years later, 2,000 people attended DockerCon, and Docker Hub was at 1.2 billion pulls. I was there for that moment. The community grew worldwide, and container workloads exploded as more and more individual, enterprise users, and partners adopted container technologies. By 2018, there were 50 billion pools, and by 2020, 130 billion. Today, DockerCon 21 estimates about 80,000 attendees and reports 360 billion cumulative image pools from Docker Hub. What is driving this amazing growth? Different people may point out different reasons, but in my experience, one of the big reasons to choose Docker is that it accelerates innovation and unlocks productivity by removing friction in the development workflow. Before Docker, it took months or years to get software from an idea to a release product. It was common to deploy a new release to production only once every quarter. It took a week to get a new developer onboarded to a project and managing dependencies while migrating software between environments was a daunting task. With Docker, we saw improvement of 10 to 100 times. Instead of months or years, we started measuring our time to deployment in hours to weeks. Release cadence became continuous and a new developer could become productive within an hour. But most importantly, we could build, share, and run software with ease. Cloud providers have now adopted container technologies natively and are running container workloads at large scale. A big portion of containerized applications running in the cloud are on AWS. The Elastic Container Registry service in AWS is reporting over 2 billion image pools per week. Overall, AWS container services experience 150% growth year over year, while the Elastic Kubernetes service has grown 10 times in one year, and Fargate usage has grown three times in a year, with 100 million tasks running every week. Tens of thousands of customers are running machine learning on AWS using containers. You may find some familiar names here, but let me expand on a couple of examples. Snap Inc. is running over 2 million transactions per second with Amazon EKS. Also, through the use of Amazon EKS and Amazon ECR, Snap has realized a 77% reduction in developer effort for launching new microservices. Samsung is using AWS Fargate to eliminate the need to manage servers and clusters and is experiencing improved operational efficiency 
while monthly compute costs are reduced by 44%. Machine learning is happening in companies of every size and industry, and also all around the world. Here are some examples. From the healthcare and biopharma industries, UC San Diego used AWS to implement an AI model to help detect pneumonia during the COVID-19 pandemic. AstraZeneca leveraged AWS ML services to accelerate drug research and introduce new medicines to the market faster. From the automotive industry, Toyota Research Institute uses deep learning on AWS to accelerate safe automated driving. And from the energy industry, Woodside, an energy company in Australia, is creating intelligent assets fusing IoT, robotics, and artificial intelligence using AWS services. Now let's talk about how you could leverage Docker to build and run your workloads on AWS container services. What we mean by the term workload is any process that you may run on the cloud which consumes resources. From the process perspective, there are three main workload patterns. Microservices are processes which are continuously running and processing requests. They may be automatically scaled to keep up with the request load, but the essence of this type of workload is the service is running continuously even if there are no requests to process. This pattern is most commonly used when there are strict latency requirements and need to guarantee that a request will receive a response as quickly as possible. Jobs are processes that are orchestrated to run only while they're working on a specific unit of work or task. A job process dies when it completes its work. The work that jobs do is commonly managed by a work queue or a scheduler. This pattern is most commonly used for ETL workloads, big data parallel processing, model training, and other tasks that are expected to require significant resources and time to complete. Serverless functions are processes that execute your code on fully managed infrastructure in response to a request or event. They can be thought of as microservices that scale down to zero when there are no requests, or jobs that run up to a limited period of time. Serverless functions are a great choice for workloads that do not have a strict latency requirement for the first request and do not require immense compute resources or long processing times. The following services are typically used when running containerized workloads on AWS. ECR is the AWS Docker image registry. One benefit of using ECR over other registries on AWS is that it is integrated with identity and access management, which makes access to your private registries more seamless and secure. EC2 is the AWS service which allows you to self-manage your compute resources. EC2 instances are typically used for development of new container images or applications and for building a self-managed clusters. ECS is a fully managed orchestrator for your container tasks. ECS is used extensively within Amazon to power services such as SageMaker, AWS Batch, Amazon Lex, and Amazon.com's recommendation engine. EKS is Amazon's managed Kubernetes service. Since it runs upstream Kubernetes, you can deploy any standard Kubernetes application to EKS without having to change code. AWS Fargate is a serverless compute engine for containers that run on ECS or EKS. Enable this option if you prefer not to manage your own server infrastructure. AWS Lambda is the service which allows you to run serverless functions. Since Q3 of 2020, AWS Lambda can run functions packaged as Docker container images. Those images can be up to 10 gigabytes in size. 
AWS Batch is a managed service that runs your batch computing jobs. It uses ECS in the background to run job containers. The following table describes the AWS services that are commonly used depending on the specific workload pattern. As you can see, there are several choices which give you the freedom to use a solution that is best suited for your particular use case. Today, for DockerCon, we are releasing an open source project in the AWS Samples organization on GitHub. This project demonstrates building a container and running it either locally or on any of the AWS services shown here. The project supports all three workload patterns, microservices, jobs, and serverless functions. The demo workflow is as follows. After we have the project cloned onto an EC2 instance, we will build the Docker images and validate them locally. When we're satisfied with how the images work, we'll push them to ECR, and then we'll configure the project for each target orchestrator and deploy to EKS, AWS Lambda, AWS Batch, and ECS plus Fargate. All of that with a single command. To do this normally, a developer would have to learn the APIs of each of these services and then build automation for the deployment and management of their application. Thanks to the Do framework referenced at the end of this presentation, management of the sample container on any of the target orchestrators is simplified to a set of self-explanatory commands. We will use config to tell the project where we want to run our container. Then run will deploy the project, status will check the container's current state, test will run unit test on the container and validate the deployment, logs will tell us what the container is doing, and stop will clean everything up. To save time, I will show screenshots of some of the steps and will run live only through the core of the demo. This is my AWS Cloud9 IDE, which runs on an EC2 instance. I have already cloned the project to show you the project structure. There are three parts to notice. The container root folder is a structure that contains any files and directories you wish to place inside your container. The env file is where all of the project settings are centralized. On line 24, is the setting which controls on which target orchestrator your container will run. The control scripts are included in the project's main folder. Let's take a look inside the container root folder. The file server.py is the implementation of the microservice pattern. It is a simple fast API application which returns a health check confirmation when its main route is called, and when its say route is called, it returns a message with the text that was sent in the request. The file lambda function.py is the implementation of a serverless function which does the same thing. It returns a health check when there is no text passed, otherwise it returns the text. The script job startup.sh is the implementation of the job pattern. When this container is run as a job, it will just print the current time up to the specified iteration limit number and then exit. Running a function packaged as a Docker container image on AWS Lambda requires the Lambda Runtime Interface Client. A function can also run locally during development using the Lambda Runtime Interface Emulator. These libraries need to be installed into the container image. For Lambda, I've created a separate Docker file and we're building two container images instead of one. On the left, 
is the generic image that is intended to run on ECS, EKS, and AWS Batch. And on the right is the image that is specific to AWS Lambda. If you prefer to build just one image that can run on any of the container orchestrators, please take a look at the serverless samples repository published by Dan Fox and linked in the references slide at the end of this presentation. As soon as the images are built, we can test them locally. We can see that by running the test script, we've executed unit tests for both the microservice, the job, and the serverless function pattern, and they're all succeeding. Since we've proven that the images work as we expect, we can push them to ECR. Rather than showing a separate demo for each target orchestrator, I have split my screen in four and will run the container on all supported remote target orchestrators simultaneously. I have also created four copies of the project and am configuring each copy with its corresponding target orchestrator. I have a macro which allows me to broadcast commands from my active shell window to all four shell windows on the screen. Executing the run script deploys the container to ECS, EKS, Batch, and AWS Lambda. After we allow sufficient time for the deployments to complete, the status script shows that all deployments are successful. ECS and EKS are running the container as a service. AWS Batch has executed the container as a job successfully, and AWS Lambda has successfully registered the container as a function and is active, awaiting to process events. For the next two steps in the demo, we'll switch to the live environment. Each of the four windows here is configured with its respective container orchestrator. Let's run the test script. Running the test script validates that all deployments are working as expected. ECS, EKS, and Lambda respond quickly, and we can see that both the health check and the message test are passing. For batch, we've actually submitted a new test job. It is currently in the runnable state until the job scheduler picks it up and executes it. That will take some time. We can monitor the job status with watch status.sh. Let's give the job some time to complete. The job scheduler has now picked up the job and is starting it. And now the job has completed successfully. Next, let's run the logs script. And we can see that all four are succeeding for both tests and that is a successful live demo. So now we can switch back to the screenshots to see the last step. As a last step, to clean up the deployments, we run the stop script. The ECS task is deregistered and the cluster is deleted. The batch job definition is deregistered. The job queue and the compute environment are deleted. The Kubernetes objects are deleted and the Lambda function is deleted as well. In this demo, we use the Linux Docker CLI in combination with scripts that use the AWS CLI and orchestrator-specific tools to provide a unified end-user experience. 
based on the do framework. This solution will work in any bash compatible environment on Linux, Mac OS or Windows. However, if you are using Docker Desktop on Mac OS or Windows, I want to point out that you have an additional option that is available to you for deploying your container application to AWS. Since November 2020, Docker Compose is embedded in the Docker CLI on Docker Desktop. It supports running Compose applications against an ECS context. To create an ECS context, just use Docker Context Create ECS. Once your active context is ECS, the Docker Compose Up command will deploy and run your application on ECS instead of locally. Lastly, let's take a look at how the concept from our demo project was applied to solve a real-world large-scale ML problem. A customer needed to run 3,000 containerized models for inference on AWS. The number of models was expected to grow over time. Each model needed to be accessible individually through an API endpoint and respond within 100 milliseconds from receiving a request. The solution must be scalable and cost-efficient. This is a difficult problem because the cost of running ML models in production typically dominates the overall infrastructure cost for development and serving of ML applications. The challenge is made harder over time by the fact that ML practitioners are creating increasingly complex models that are even more expensive to run in production, as well as the fact that resource utilization of GPUs is typically low and cost inefficient for inference workloads. To solve this problem, Amazon offers EC2 INF1 instances, which are specialized for ML inference workloads, and through their high-performance, custom-designed AWS Inferentia chip, they are able to achieve both lower cost and higher throughput compared to GPU instances. This instance type is available through EC2, ECS, EKS, and AWS SageMaker. Here are some benchmarks showing that Amazon INF1 instances offer the best price performance for inference workloads in the cloud. To solve this problem, we used a standard EKS cluster. By utilizing INF1 6x large instances, which have four inferential chips, we were able to pack 19 models per chip using Fast API. We scaled the cluster to 40 nodes and were able to run over 3,000 models for less than $80 per hour, considering on-demand pricing. This deployment achieved latency of under 50 milliseconds and throughput of over 200 requests per second. An upcoming blog post will provide further details on these benchmarks. In conclusion, I'd like to point out three key takeaways. First, Docker containers are widely adopted. Second, the project we open source today can help you containerize and run your workloads on AWS. And third, Docker containers are a great fit for running and scaling of your ML workloads. Further information can be found by following the links from the list of references on this slide. I want to take a moment to thank Mahadevan, Fabio, Arun, and Dan for their contribution to this presentation. I have invited them to the Q&A session in this talk. Thank you for joining us and have a great DockerCon. We'll take questions from the audience now in the live chat, or if you would like to connect offline later, please reach out to me or any of the other contributors.